I'm going to show you some uses for Affinity Photo's High Pass Filter. The filter can be found on the Filters menu under the Sharpen category, but I'm going to focus exclusively on the non-destructive variant of the filter, which can be found under Layer, New Live Filter Layer, and Sharpen. I'll apply a live High Pass Filter to this image. To begin with, the entire image renders as neutral grey. If we think of image information in the frequency domain, a high pass only passes through frequencies above a certain band threshold and attenuates frequencies below that threshold. As I increase the radius value, we'll start to see information appear. Using a small radius value allows shorter wavelengths to pass through. These are higher frequencies, which typically comprise the texture or fine detail of an image. Gradually increasing the radius value begins to allow longer wavelengths to pass through as well. At the maximum value of 100 pixels, we are starting to see some lower frequencies, which tend to contain flatter tonal detail. We are seeing some color pass through as well. Checking monochrome prevents this and only renders the grayscale intensity of the image information that gets passed through. Now, in context of image editing, we would typically combine this high pass filter with various blending operations to achieve effects such as sharpening and detail enhancement. For example, let me zoom in and initially start with a radius of 2 pixels. I'll now set the high pass layers blend mode to linear light, which results in quite a pronounced sharpening effect. If I increase the radius, this enhancement starts to apply to lower frequency detail as well, enhancing local contrast. Using the linear light blend mode can often result in noticeable halo artifacting around high contrast edge detail, such as here to the left of the steps. This can often be negated by experimenting with other similar blend modes, such as hard light and soft light. In fact, combining a large radius value with hard light is often a good way of increasing perceptual contrast and depth of an image. I'll show you this again quickly on another image by adding a live high pass filter, bringing the radius up to 100 pixels, checking monochrome, and setting the blend mode to hard light. If the effect is too strong or aggressive, Switching to soft light can produce a more subtle effect, but I'll leave it on hard light for now, as it suits the gritty and harsh appearance I'm trying to achieve. The slider value is constrained to a maximum of 100 pixels, since the operation can be quite taxing on compositing performance, and up to 100 pixels covers the majority of use cases. You can, however, exceed this value, if you wish to, by simply typing a greater number into the input box here, and using enter or return. Do be aware that if you are not using a graphics card for hardware compositing, this may be noticeably slow on software compositing with the CPU. If you are finding that editing performance is being hindered too much, you can always temporarily hide the high pass layer to speed up compositing, then show it again when you are ready to export your image. Multiple high pass filters can be stacked to gradually sharpen an image. I'll show you this workflow on another example. First of all, I'm going to change what happens when a live filter is added to the layer stack. By default, it child layers into the currently selected layer, but I don't want that behavior. I'll go to the assistant preferences up here and I'll change this option, adding filter layer to selection to add filter as new layer. Now I'll add a live high pass filter. Notice it now appears immediately as a parent layer on its own in the layer stack. You may need to experiment with the starting radius value depending on the initial sharpness of your own imagery and also the image's pixel resolution. The resolution of my image here is fairly large at 55 megapixels. So I'll start with a value of four pixels to pass through just very fine detail, and I'll also check monochrome. For lower resolution imagery, you may want to try between 1 and 3 pixels. Now I'll set this high pass layers blend mode to soft light, and I will then duplicate the layer using Command J on Mac, Control J 
on Windows. On this copy of the high pass filter, I'll increase the radius to 6 pixels. Then I'll duplicate another copy of it. I'll increase the radius here to 8 pixels. And I'll do this one more time and change this radius to 10 pixels. Finally, I'll shift click to select all four high pass layers, and I can now hide them to reveal the initial image. Then I can show the four layers again. To reveal the detail enhancement I've been able to achieve with multiple high pass filters. This technique is particularly useful for macro photography, astrophotography, and other imagery, where it is typically harder to control sharpening without exacerbating noise and increasing contrast too much between edges. You can also record these steps as part of your own macro to dramatically speed this workflow process up if you wish. Anyway, that was a look at the high pass filter and some of its use cases. I hope you found this video useful and thank you for watching.